Hi everyone! Thanks for visiting my channel. If you are new here, thanks for stopping by. I hope you will consider subscribing, like and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today I have another tasty Valentine's Day treat for you. We have the holiday of love coming up. So I thought I would do another fun dessert for you. Uh, last time we did chocolate covered marshmallows. If you missed that, make sure you go back and check those out. Those marshmallows are delicious. They were chocolate covered strawberry marshmallows and just really decadent. So give those a look if you haven't watched that video. Um, but today we're going to be making white chocolate cheesecake with chocolate raspberry sauce. Now a few months back I did make this delicious chocolate raspberry sauce and we canned it up. But if you do not have this on your shelf or you are not a canner, don't worry because I'm going to leave modifications in the description box below for making just a single batch of it uh, that will be perfect for the size of cheesecake. Um, and if you're not a canner, that will help you out as well. But I'm gonna refer you to the instructions in that video so I will link the video as well that will explain how to make the sauce just make the modifications that I describe in the description box below and omit the canning instructions. So it's really easy to do, fun to do. And it's so good, you guys, it's so decadent. If you are not a canner, um, I highly encourage you to just try water bath canning. It's not hard, you don't need a lot of special equipment and the sauce is just delicious. And we do a lot of other water bath canning recipes on my channel that are just fun to have. So anyway, that's what we're gonna use today. Then we are going to start with a delicious Oreo cookie crust. Who doesn't love Oreos? Um, delicious chocolate base for our cheesecake. And then we're going to be making a white chocolate cheesecake filling. Absolutely divine chocolate on chocolate, right? So for our cheesecake filling, we are going to need some delicious white chocolate. I'm going to be using two bars of the Ghirardelli white chocolate. Just a word to the wise, make sure that whatever chocolate you decide to use, that it is in fact chocolate. Make sure you read the ingredients to make sure that it includes cocoa butter. If it does not include cocoa butter, it is not chocolate. Um, the Ghirardelli bars have cocoa butter in them and so do the Baker's baking bars. Those also include cocoa butter, um, but if you are just using the white chips that you find in the baking aisle of your grocery store, those typically do not contain cocoa butter and they are just vanilla flavored chips. So just a word to the wise on that, make sure you select a high quality chocolate to make your cheesecake taste as delicious as possible. So uh, the other ingredients for the cheesecake, we're going to be using four eight ounce bricks of cream cheese. I like Philadelphia cream cheese. That is just my favorite. Use whatever you have on hand or whatever you like. Uh, we're gonna be using some eggs. We're gonna use a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, a half a cup of sour cream, and a little bit of flour. You can omit the flour if you prefer. I like it, I think that it is it helps with the texture of cheesecake, but that's just my preference. I am not going to be baking this cheesecake in a water bath. I've done cheesecakes both ways. I've gotten cracks even when I baked it in a water bath. Plus I think a water bath is just a hassle. That's just my personal opinion. So we are going to bake our cheesecake on a lower heat setting for a longer period of time. So we're gonna bake it on about 300 degrees for about an hour and 15 minutes. Then I'm going to turn off the heat, let the door of the oven be ajar, and I'm gonna let it sit in the oven for about an hour. And then we're gonna let it cool, stick it in the fridge, and then we can cut it and top it with our delicious chocolate raspberry sauce. So a little bit different method for baking cheesecake. Um, the, one of the other things that leads to cracking on cheesecakes can be air bubbles. So we're going to release some of those air bubbles uh, to try to eliminate that. But I have found baking it on a lower temperature works really well and I don't have to fool with a water bath. So that's the method I'm going to be using. You do whatever works for you. So I'm going to bring you in close and we're going to get started with the Oreo cookie crust. Hey guys, I have 36 Oreos in my food processor. So I'm just gonna pulse those till I have a nice crumbly texture. Okay, once your Oreos are all broken up into a crumbly texture, then we are going to add them 
to a bowl containing four tablespoons of melted butter. And just stir those until they're combined. Once you have your crumbs incorporated into your butter, we're gonna pour that in our spring form pan. And then we're just gonna use our hands and press it into the bottom and up the sides. Okay, once you have it pretty evenly pressed into your pan, we're going to pop this into a preheated 350 degree oven for about eight minutes. Okay, once your crust has baked for about eight minutes, I take it out of the oven while it cools, we're gonna to put together our um, ingredients for our cheesecake filling. Just a word of wisdom here, I do put my pan on top of another sheet pan with some parchment paper because sometimes when you bake cheesecakes, the butter from your crust can ooze out of your springform pan and make some mess in your oven. So that's why it is on a sheet pan with some parchment. So we're gonna let that hang out and cool. We're gonna put together our cheesecake ingredients. So we need four bricks of cream cheese, softened the important part about making cheesecake is you want all of your ingredients at room temperature which means you're going to have to let them sit out for at least an hour sometimes two hours depending on the temperature of your kitchen so i get all of my ingredients ready and i let things just sit on my counter while i do other things in my kitchen but you want especially your cream cheese you want it to be nice and soft or you will have lumpy cheesecake and we don't like lumpy cheesecake right Okay, I have four bricks of cream cheese in my bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing that on low. And then I'm gonna turn it up to a medium speed for about 30 seconds or so just to make sure that my cream cheese is nice and smooth. Okay, so after 30 seconds, you are going to go ahead and add three quarters of a cup of sugar we're going to add a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. And a half a cup of sour cream. And we're going to mix that till it's fully incorporated. Start on low and then move it up to a medium speed. Okay, after about 30 seconds, I scrape down my bowl, and this step is really important if you want a nice, smooth, creamy cheesecake. So fully scrape down your bowl and your beater, especially where like the top of your beater and the sides. So we get everything nice and mixed together. So turn that back on medium speed for about another 30 seconds. Okay, see how smooth and creamy that is? I hope that comes across on camera because it's so smooth in texture and that's exactly what we want. So now we are going to add our eight ounces of white chocolate that has been melted and slightly cooled. And we're going to mix that for another 30 seconds. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of pure vanilla extract. Okay, after about 30 seconds, scrape down the sides and your beater again. And now we're going to add our eggs one at a time and we're going to mix this on a low speed one at a time until each egg is incorporated. Okay, once your eggs are mixed in, again, we're going to scrape down our bowl 
trust me, you guys, it's worth it to take the time to scrape down your bowl and make sure everything is fully incorporated. Then you won't have any lumps in your cheesecake. Okay, once you've scraped everything down again, now we're going to add two tablespoons of flour, optional, but I like the texture that it gives the cheesecake. And we're going to mix that on low for another 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. We're gonna get rid of our beater. And once again, I'm going to scrape down the sides of my bowl just to make sure there's no rogue flour hanging out there. Okay, so now what we wanna do, we wanna get rid of any as many air bubbles as we possibly can. So what I do is just put a towel or a pot holder on my, because I have a granite countertop and we don't wanna crack it. And we just wanna tap the bowl about 20, to 30 times and you can if you watch closely you can see that bubbles are coming to the surface and they're breaking open okay once we've removed as many air bubbles as possible we're going to go ahead and pour our cheesecake filling into our crust look at that smooth creamy cheesy dreamy cheesecake yum oh okay so now we're going to put this in a 300 degree oven i reduced my heat when i took my crust out so we are at 300 degrees now we're going to pop this in our oven for about an hour and 15 minutes then we're going to turn off the heat and let it sit in there and about another hour okay guys my cheesecake has baked for an hour and 15 minutes so now i'm going to turn my oven off and I am going to make the do door of the oven just a little bit ajar. You wanna open it just a little bit and we're going to let our cheesecake sit in the oven for another hour or so. Still keep an eye on it. At this point, the edges should be set and the middle of it is still gonna be jiggly. So we want it to finish cooking and hopefully it won't crack. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but to turn the oven off, make your door ajar and let it sit for an hour and then we can take it out. We're gonna let it cool at room temperature until it's cool enough to refrigerate and then we'll stick it in the refrigerator for several hours, even overnight if you're doing this the day before. But we're gonna taste it later today, no matter where we are. So I will bring you back uh, when we're ready. Okay guys, my cheesecake has sat in the oven with the door jar for about an hour. You just wanna keep an eye on it. You don't want it to brown too much. When it's done, it, the middle of it should be set. It might have a tiny bit of movement to it, but it should be set. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just going to let it continue to cool to room temperature, and then I'm gonna pop it in the freezer, or in the freezer, I'm gonna pop it in the refrigerator for several hours until it's chilled all the way through, and then we can cut it and add our delicious chocolate raspberry sauce on top. I'm so excited. I love making cheesecakes. I know they are a labor of love, but when you do them right, they are so worth the effort. Okay guys, moment of truth. In light of full disclosure, it is not quite as chilled as I would like for it to be, but I'm trying to wrap up my video, so I think it's close enough, but I wanted to show you how delicious it is. And as you can tell, I don't want it to slide around. You've got a beautiful cookie crust, creamy cheesecake, and you can see there's no cracks or bubbles on top. So all that extra effort we put in is so worth it. So now we're gonna top it with a little bit of our raspberry sauce. And like I said, I will leave a link to this below with instructions on how to make it, just enough of it for this cheesecake. But this gives us two different types of chocolate going on. And this raspberry sauce is just amazing. And it's so, perfect for Valentine's Day. And of course we have to have a little whipped cream just like they do at Cheesecake Factory, right? Look at that. Is that not just beautiful? So let's taste it. See how we did. Like I said, the center of it, you can tell, is not chilled all the way through, but we don't care. Get a little sauce, a little bit of cheesecake.
So good. It's light and creamy, and you can taste that white chocolate in the background. And then you have a burst of raspberry flavor with the traditional chocolate in the topping. It's delicious, it's beautiful, and it is perfect for Valentine's Day. So I hope that you will give it a try. I appreciate you guys coming along with me. If you have any comments or questions about my recipe, please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Happy Valentine's Day.